Alright, so this is the preemptive jungle tier list for season 3, but keep in mind it isn't exactly a tier list per se, if anything it's more observation of who seemed to be doing better or worse and come around the first three of season 3. I mean the, the uh, first tests of season 3. And of course I can't say everything and this is why it's kind of a uh, loose tier list because there's nothing really nothing no criteria set yet for how to test these junglers so I'm using season some of the stuff from season two and some new se stuff from season three that may be relevant one of the biggest things that people must understand is what's gonna make the biggest impact in the jungle isn't the jungle mage remakes itself it's gonna be the items the items that have come out are gonna make a bit the biggest impact on the jungle the fact that there's a lot more versatility in what you can purchase, a lot more efficiency with your gold, that's what's going to make the big difference. And that's what's probably going to affect which junglers are used. That said, uh, the list is broken up into two lists, in fact. The one at top is the one where I personally tested to an extent, and the one below is where I didn't get much to test on them or at all, so I had to trust the people who were also testing to give me their information, and I built something out of that. Let me fix my mic. Okay, so with that said, Let's dig into what I what I found, and keep in mind this: it is in order from left to right. the the group The group at you know one call, I mean one line. It, there's no order. It is just like the first one is Skarner, Olaf, Nocturne, Doctor Mundo. It doesn't necessarily mean Skarner's the best. It just means these guys are the ones showing more promise. And then as you go down, it, the promise sort of wanes. Anyways, the one for Number one, and this is definitive, even the people who tested it out and, t and shared information with me agreed. Uh, though there were some people disagreeing on the whole Nocturne thing. Uh, but I, I personally think Nocturne is going to get like a, a lot stronger. Skarner, Olaf, Nocturne, Dr. Mundo. These guys, not only does it seem like the item, they're, like, they're having hard-ons for all the items that have come out, but the fact is Machete actually helped them get better. I mean, Dr. Mundo is my Dr. Mundo. He'll be fast regardless. And we all, I don't want to discuss the whole Shivana Dr. Mundo argument here again because I kind of discuss it all the time. But Dr. Mundo definitely ended up benefiting more from the items, than, as far as I can see, than Shivana, at least in being able to buy them. So these guys, they actually got significantly better at clearing. They got faster. Olaf, Nocturne, and Skarner, and Dr. Moon stayed relatively the same, but these uh, the other three, they got faster. So Olaf, do you, so you guys saw the video. That was just disgusting. Hell, like I'm just going to wonder what uh, what uh, what's going to happen when teams give him a leash or whatever. Uh, the machete just made him a monster. So these guys actually improved, and they were already damn good. So... That's scary, and of course, like I said, the items that there that exist now are just gonna make them even more uh, badass. Now, Maoka, and not I mean number two, the number two list. I mean line. They're, these champions pretty much stayed either the same, they got slightly better, or uh, there's like hope in them because of other you know stuff that wasn't really tested on season two, and some just got worse. Like Maoka, he's basically the same damn thing. There's really nothing much different from him. He already had uh, you know high good clearing power and actual sustained damage, so he pretty much got the, he stayed the damn same. What you know, of course, his items got more limited into just buying machete. Nunu and Cho'Gath. This is where it presents one of those interesting debacles. For starters, uh, Oracles is kind of dead. So they got, these guys were great uh, Oracle picker-uppers. They buy it early, roam around, take awards, and they're self-sufficient on their own. And they had a lot of versatility in their builds and whatever they, the hell they could do. And a lot of starting builds, you know, they could just stock up on wards, they didn't need potions at all. And now Nunu has four four wards if he wants to, and takes the entire utility tree, same thing as uh, Cho'Gath. Now, the issue in here lies, though, is that the clearing speed for Cho'Gath got a little bit worse, and so, and Nunu is, you know, the scales late game kind of poorly, but... These two have an amazing range in what items they could build. So I'm just banking on the fact that they've got that going for them. Shogath, like all these items that come out, all these items that just, like just are being going to be released, he can make use of any convoluted mix of them. And that's actually a great thing. Like he can buy that uh, Glacier Shroud Sheet item if he wants to, if he's building some kind of mold of that, or he can just go ahead and build the Frozen Heart anyways. He can build offense or all those crazy AP items or that new promotion AP item. It's just like, he can build a whole crap load of things and you know 
that alone, in my opinion, gives them a lot of gold efficiency, way more than a lot of other junglers have. And again, since the jungle isn't exactly getting any better till 11 minutes, I think you're still going to need to do, uh, consider that what you do. Jarvan. Uh, Jarvan actually did get slightly better. Slightly better than before. I mean, sure, the Min destroyed his flag, but it doesn't matter. Just ignore the fact that that happened. He got better slightly faster. Uh, he's always been someone who, like, loved the sustains of the potions because he has high armor. And, you know, just if when combine that with a cloth armor, but not in this case, you know, with a machete. And he'll just heal himself up. And afterwards, he doesn't really have many, much sustain problems because he just has so much damn armor. Uh, and his clearing is, oh, hasn't, was never really bad. Uh, that said, though, uh, he'd be able to farm up after 11 minutes if he hasn't been bothered. Otherwise, he's actually pretty strong early game, so. That's children. If you can hear that, it's children crying around because it's Thanksgiving. Anyways, Lee Sin. Lee Sin didn't exactly get worse as to be crap. He just got worse as to not be a god. Like, he's he was a god jungler. And yeah, it sucks that he's no longer that, but I'm kind of tired of people sending me messages. Oh my god, the Leeson's crap. I hate you right. Now I wasted my money. He's not crap. He's just not as great. Though, give him a leash and he'll probably still, he's probably one of the junglers who can still do a really good buff to buff thing. And then go kill something or go beat up the enemy jungler. He's just not going to have as easy of a time doing that anymore. For starters, the boots thing, the boots thing was kind of something he loved. And he could do that in season one, which gave him a huge advantage versus other junglers in the first place. Uh, but... I mean, the sustain thing is what's going to shoot shoot him. Sure, you can take uh, some potions, but the machete, the machete, no, no items uh, really make him any faster. And the, neither does the machete. So he's going to be pretty slow clearing if he fails a gank. And then you'll snow, like he's one of those junglers that needed a snowball in the first place, at least in order to be a murder machine. So he might just end up being relegated to a bruiser support unless he gets fed. But that kind of goes to say for everybody. Then the next little bracket there. This is kind of everybody. The thing about these guys is they're like, this is just like a happy bunch here. Nautilus, Sejuani, Shivana, Udyr, Darius, Diana, Fiddlesticks. These guys are just a happy bunch here. So, like, Nautilus actually got better and then they buffed him. Not like, I'll say that again. Nautilus with the machete actually got better. Then he got buffed. Riot could do whatever the hell they wanted with their own game, but yeah, he got better. That's kind of cool, in my opinion. It's like, Nautilus as a bruiser has always been fun. And I think I could end up giving him an option with the increased arm. Sejuani, so she got better uh, slightly. Then she got buffed. And I haven't really tested her out. But I figure out that's going to help her a lot anyway. So, Shivana, Shivana. She pretty much say the same damn thing as in Season 2. Udyr, this is the weird one. Phoenix feels weaker, actually. But, uh, but Tiger seems a lot stronger. Like, I have no real opinion here. It just kind of seems weird. Darius and Diana. This is the, the interesting one. They stayed the same. The same thing. Like, season two, the, from season two to season three. They, their sustain is the same. Their clearing is the same. Exact speed, actually. But the interesting part is that... I mean, the interesting thing that I want to see is how good will the items, new items would be on them. Second, the fact that the farm increases after 11 minutes and they just destroy camps, that's going to give them an edge. I mean, and of course, one thing that's awesome for Darius and every other physical guy is the Everest Blade. The Everest Blade upgrading into actually a decent amount of items uh, and giving more gold. That's something I'll probably end up buying on Darius now that the Heart of Gold is gone. That'll be cool. Diana just has a whole lot new more I have toys to play with. Fiddlesticks, he actually got better too. Uh, his clearing, his problem in Season 1, I mean not Season 1, Season 2, wasn't that... His, he was slow. It's because his first clear was actually pretty good. And like if you build, especially if you build him something that I can call Suicide Fiddlesticks, which is up AP up the ass, he cleared really damn quickly, except he would die if anything even like sneezed at him. That said, it wasn't a problem that uh, his first clear was slow or dangerous. It's that his subsequent clears were just awful. But now with Machete, that dark wind just destroys mobs. Or monsters, I mean, like that damn thing. Like, machete was a godsend to fiddlesticks. Hell, he could go machete five mana potions if he can't get his blue. You'll be fine that way for a while. Then the next one is they get a weaker, and it's, it kind of feels sad that I have to put Trondo in there. But Trondo didn't actually get any better. His, his existence in the game is based solely on the meta. 
And by the meta, I mean which champions are being picked. And I don't really have any hope for the meta changing to being a one tank meta again. So he, I don't have much hope for him here. And I mean, pound for pound, if you were to farm up as much items with as 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 Trundle as you would with Olaf, Olaf will end up being stronger. Trundle is all about team comp and all about the meta. So he he just didn't. He, I don't feel this is going to bring him back. At least got better actually, but uh. Now this one's still up in the air. I mean, her late game is still pretty balls, so eh, I can't like in, in, as the jungle. I mean, as a top lane, I've seen him actually do a lot of crazy crap. So as a jungler, we'll, so that's still just up in the air. I have no idea. Hecarim is one thing people need to understand. As Hecarim, I don't think Hecarim can fight toe to toe with anybody. The deal with Hecarim is he's got to get ahead of them, and then he just uses that advantage to utterly destroy teams. I've seen some people passively farm to level six, and then. I'm like, why don't you just gank? His ganking isn't that great. I know his ganking is kind of wonky early on, but you gotta do it. You gotta murder people. You gotta punish people because once they get items, you and you like they're gonna destroy you. He kind of just can't go pound for pound. He needs an advantage. So I think that's still gonna be the case in this new jungle. He's about the same damn clearing speed, and even with leash. So like, uh, he's just he needs. I don't know what the fuck he actually needs. I think, I think he just actually needs more damage on his Q. He, if you give him some clear time and let him farm up faster than his first crappy clear, then you know maybe he'd be better. Because his ganking is is great, but it's it's off in some ways. Okay, Warwick, Warwick, his sustain is amazing. Yeah, that's all great. But again, he's kind of like he's. I don't think he'll ever be anything more than a situational pick now i mean his ganking is great but as far as i'm concerned the season th three jungle didn't change enough that it won't you won't need gankers or you won't need invaders and warwick still just kind of has to farm up to level six sure that sustain is amazing but everybody has a leash so the sustain isn't that important though warwick can start off machete and a bunch of wards or some other crap though we have that to see though i, I think war uh Tanky support Warwick, which is a bunch of auras and taking the utility tree. I think that's what's going to end up happening. Warwick is just one of those champions that I think may may or may not make a big impact. But I think as far as the old school junglers go, Fiddlesticks ended up beating Warwick in this uh, iteration. Because, yeah, more more tools to use. Jax, Rengar, and Xin Zhao. I don't actually care much for them and as junglers. I think they're more laners now. Rengar, he's been neutered so badly, and the Season 3 jungle actually hurt him. It kind of kicked him in the nuts. Jax, uh, like I, unless they let him passively farm forever, I don't see him as a threat. Xin Zhao, same kind of deal. And then, who cares about the other fear, uh, tier things? Kha'Zix... The thing, this is one of the things I have to tell people. He he has he got better sustain wise, clearing speed wise. He's the same damn thing, except by maybe like five seconds. But uh, he's still he's still suffering the same issues as before. He's still gonna need murder gold unless after eleven minutes they still let him farm for whatever damn reason. But even then, he's an assassin, and I am pretty damn sure assassins need to get a little bit ahead of their opponents in order to actually annihilate them. Now for the tier list of other people. There's three the the number ones in the second little list. Those I actually have to agree with. Uh, the first clear with Amumu, I was just like, damn, he melted everything. Sure, he got his ass kind of kicked, but you know, give him a leash, he's just gonna melt everything. And then that's why I couldn't actually test too much because I didn't get a leash. Uh, Kale, she actually got a lot better because I guess you know her little fire sword that thing just tears people to pieces. And I don't exactly think you need a Wriggles on her. You probably just build something else with a machete. And yeah, see, I the Static Shiv, I don't know if that works on her E. Uh, Shaco, yeah, Shaco is admittedly a lot stronger. Uh, you can just, you know, that, the double box thing, and, you know, buff, uh, putting boxes at raids and boxes at the lizard and box in the blue and killing the damn thing. That shit actually works out yeah, a lot better. I mean, sure, it won't be the two minute level three crap, but it will be, you know, those boxes can tank for him. So you can end up trigger, like, putting boxes, 
opening gambit they blasted him the lizard girls and stabs one or two then you put another box and then you know you fear it and then you just end up taking basically no damage and this time it's like not it's not like you can botch the box trick anymore you know you won't bug out and they won't stab you the damn things will just aggro the guy just naturally for being the closest thing then for th the three these guys <clears throat> these guys Malphite got slightly worse. Riven stayed basically the same damn thing. Though, I'll tell you this, her level 1 is awful. Um, uh, Shen, he got slower. <laughs> which is kind of depressing to know, huh? Gangplank? This one's uh, well, one I have mixed feelings about. I actually tried him a lot more ex like, extensively, but I didn't make a video, which is why he's down here in this list. Uh, he got... He, he farms a lot better, if you can believe that. I guess because uh, all the little mi little monsters just kind of die with one auto attack and a gunshot to the brain. Like you just get to farm that up. It's like get some cooldown reduction, maybe those boots. Or if you, when you have blue, slash them, you know, bash, shoot them in the brains. Bam, collect gold. It's just slash, shoot, focus, big guy. Slash, shoot, focus the big guy again. Slash, shoot, and then whatever. That he farmed up a lot better because those little other, other little cohorts are crap. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, that worked out. Though I don't think you'd probably want to build wriggles on him because you screwed up. I think your first item with him will be Adverse Blade. And just keep farming the crap out of the jungle. So he's somebody who's in my radar. I want him to be stronger. Now, the other one's just like Singed. Uh, see, Singed, Trindomir, Wukong, Fizz. And it's just heard that they got better. And Trindomir, meh, still kind of the same thing. Same thing, Singed and Fizz, slightly better. Then the other one you see is Ramus. Uh, Ramus, this is one where the reason why he's not even a NATO list is when I tried him before he got buffed, he was complete crap. He actually got worse, which is something that's kind of hard to believe, isn't it? He got worse. Then they buffed him, and I didn't bother to try him out again. So that one's just, and then nobody's told me anything. So he's just there. I, I tried him, he was crapped, and they buffed him, so, and I haven't tried him again, so whatever. That one's just up in the air. Anyways, enjoy season three when it comes out.